Hello guys and welcome to the channel Civil Construction and Tutor and this is the fourth video in the video series of Structural Dynamics and we are discussing about types of vibration and I am making a separate video for underdamped vibration because it is the most practical type of vibration that we will see in our system. Third case is underdamped condition and here the value of xi is less than 1 and as I have already discussed in the previous video it has two imaginary roots. And in our general case, that is practically the value of damping ratio in structures is very much less. That is very, very small than 1. So the equation of quadratic form changes to S is equal to minus xi omega plus omega now taking minus as common so 1 minus xi square minus xi omega plus minus sorry, plus minus i omega 1 minus xi square because I am taking i as a common i is equal to minus sorry i square is equal to minus what so taking i out of the square root now damped condition that means there will be a different frequency so we will be taking damped angular frequency not the natural frequency so we will introduce a new term that is damped frequency so omega d will be the damped angular frequency don't get confused with the natural frequency and we have an expression for it omega d is equal to omega 1 minus xi square so we will replace the value of omega under root 1 minus xi square by omega d, omega d in the above equation. So s is equal to minus xi omega plus minus i omega d. Simply don't get confused with omega and omega d. Thus u of t is equal to e to the power minus xi omega t a1 e to the power i omega d positive value plus a2 e to the power minus i omega d t. Here you have to make a quick observation. I will tell you what we have to make sure. So this being the equation 1 and if we compare with the equation of undamped free vibration, we find it out that the general equation is similar that is with the undamped free vibration. Equation that we have just derived is similar to that of the undamped equation. I will show you that also except that it is okay it is considered with the exponential term e to the power minus xi omega t so that is the difference it is because the undamped and damped gets different with the term or with the concept of decaying and here in damped case the vibration or oscillation gets decayed exponentially so this is the equation as i was talking about so this is similar to that of the equation that we have just derived so we substitute the value now we can write u of t is equal to e to the power minus i omega t which is the exponential term modulator okay here exponential modulator a1 will be replaced as c1 cos omega t plus c2 sin omega t this is omega d don't get confused because here we will use the exponent uh, sorry damped frequency now omega d by omega is equal to 1 minus xi square simply i am using the relation that i have just depicted here omega d by omega square plus xi square is equal to 1 now if we see this equation okay here which is the similar to that equation of the circle so that means i can uh, make out a relation between the value omega d by omega and xi square in the quadrant or in the graph but for the value here we consider is that the value of omega d by omega which is a positive value similarly 
xi is also a positive value so i will be using the first quadrant only and considering the value to be 1 but generally xi is very very less than 1 which is our case that is under damped condition for xi is equal to 10 percent which is 0 0.1 omega d by omega is equal to 0 0.99 which is nearly equal to 1 so that means for xi is equal to 10 percent we have omega d by omega nearly equal to 1 so this is the concept that we have to understand for here so and generally the damping ratio is less than 10 percent in our structures u of t at 0 is equal to u of 0 substituting the value of t as 0 and this value comes as 1 exponential to the 0 and c1 cos omega dt that means cos omega 0 cos 0 1 so c1 into 1 plus c2 into 0 obviously sin 0 is equal to 0 now u, c1 is equal to u of 0 so substituting the initial condition the general equation and u of u dot of t is equal to u dot of 0 is equal to substituting the value in the first derivative so minus xi omega e to the power minus xi omega t and it will be c1 cos omega dt plus c2 sin omega dt plus because we have to use the product rule here e to the power minus xi omega t omega d minus c1 sin omega d t plus omega d c2 cos omega dt now substitute the value of d as a t as 0 then we will find the value for the coefficient c2 as we have the initial condition so u dot of 0 is equal to sine term will be 0 So minus xi omega e to the power t is equal to 0 so that means 1 so into c1 plus e to the power minus xi omega t again it will be 1 so omega d c2 we have the value for c1 so we can find out the value for c2 u dot 0 by omega d plus xi c1 is u of 0 by let me substitute the value here okay omega and xi that means it will be 1 minus xi square under root 1 minus xi square i guess you can understand this simple mathematical trick so we got the value for c1 and c2 then substituting c1 and c2 u of t is equal to e to the power minus xi omega t u naught cos omega dt plus that is u naught means u0 plus uh, u dot of 0 by omega d plus xi u naught under root 1 minus xi square sin omega dt so this is the general solution form now let's find out the peak value that is amplitude and for it we have rho uh, rho is equal to under root a square plus b and uh, this being the variable we will not consider in the amplitude value so we will be taking a square plus b square only rho is equal to then a square that is u naught square plus b square that means u dot of 0 by omega d 
plus xi u dot u zero by under root one minus xi square. So this is the amplitude value. Now we'll find out the value for theta, which is the phase angle. So theta is equal to tan inverse b by a. So we'll substitute the value for b and a respectively. So b is uh, u dot of zero plus xi u zero divided by omega d. I will neglect under root one minus xi square because the value of xi is very much small. That means it will be nearly equal to 1 and under root of 1 is nearly equal to 1 so that will be neglected divided by a which is u0 so this term is neglected simply okay so we have got the value for the theta also b by a so this much in this video we will see a numerical in the next video thank you i hope you have got the point here do like and subscribe